Hi, I'm Margaret at Miller Guide, and today I'm here to share with you um, a very important thing to keep you safe and enjoying winter. So when I was listening to the radio about two weeks ago, they were interviewing people that who, because of COVID, are not able to travel south. And so we need to stay active, but we need to stay safe in our northern climates. And that's where, when I was talking to one of my clients, Leah Geller, who kindly shared with me her strategy, which is wearing ice bug boots. So I got myself a pair and I have been loving them. And so, you know, this is why this blog is happening because they're a small company originating out of Sweden and they started with running shoes to keep active over the winter. And in the running shoes, they put all these great studs at the bottom and so now their company has evolved from running shoes to boots. So I'll talk a little bit more about them after, but you know, why would you consider this? Well, if you're having to go out, whether it's just to feed your birds or to put out the garbage or even to shovel snow, you know, I did a blog all about safely shoveling snow, but I forgot what was at the bottom of your feet when you're shoveling, you know, so to keep you safe every step of the way. So here you see, you know, me going out yesterday morning and Richard had already go to scan the grounds and so warned me that I should, you know, maybe not wear my running shoes to run out even though there was hardly any snow on the driveway. So I decided to put my hiking boots, but despite my vibrant soles, which are usually really good gripping soles, I was slip sliding away on my own driveway, which is not a very big grade. So then I decided let's put the ice bugs and see how they perform. So they did not disappoint at all. And so whether it's on my driveway and, you know, as I continue, you'll hear at times how the ice bugs make a little bit of noise. So oftentimes if it's a little bit thin ice, I'll choose to walk on the road with thicker ice because regardless of the ice, I feel so safe. So we're going to journey around the neighborhood a little bit. There is this little hill that takes us, you know, as a shortcut. Um, so whether you like to walk your hills, or whether you like to run your hills. Either way, you know, I just feel so safe and secure wearing them. And I know you will too. Now, let's go to this little path that takes us to a little wooded area. And it was so icy because we had a day of, you know, snow and then melt and then a little freezing rain. And so, you know, this is the morning after and it was pretty much a mess. And Normally, I'd be, you know, watching every step of the way, my, my footing, but I didn't have to worry at all, you know. So whether I was walking up or running up and uh, exploring the woods, same thing. I find with these boots, I don't have to change my stride at all. I could keep the same type of stride as I did through the summer and through the fall, um, you know, feeling so super safe, even I have to admit, safer than walking the logs with my running shoes or my hiking boots in the warmer weather. So, you know, now I was just like playing on the logs and totally feeling like I had so much more support and truly felt a little bit like a billy goat. You know, it was just like, this is so fun. Um, so that, you know, oh, another thing I want to show you. So as I'm coming out of the woods, you'll see how the boots transition so nicely from you know, a wooded, you know, um, path surface. And a lot of my clients have told me when they hike on paths that they're really worried, especially on well-traveled paths because of the icy um, conditions that happen with just so many uh, walkers. So, um, you know, here I had no problem at all going back up the hill and then along the um, this cement path that, that is there, the paved path, um, taking me back to the road. So. They perform so well transitioning from one surface to another. They were wonderful. So next thing we want to talk about is what does the boot feel like? So you're going, hmm, I got two pairs. Well, yes, I do have one pair on and these belong to Richard because he never wanted to wear cleats ever. And but when I had him look at these, he got a pair so we could keep walking together and he loves them. So those are my demo pair. Now, the shoe is very rigid which makes sense if you have all these you know steel studs in the base but how they 
allow you to feel so natural in the boot is it has a bit of a rocker base effect. I noticed it and I think Richard agrees that he noticed it the first time. It was just changed the cadence, the, the sort of rock through or push off, but it was really comfortable. And you know, the first time out it was a good 40 minute walk and no you know, issues in terms of foot discomfort. It has a nice wide toe box. So I might mention, and I've heard this uh, mentioned before too, that if you have a narrow foot, then you do have to, you know, make some compensations. And my understanding is they do have a blog on that, that topic on their website. But otherwise, super comfortable. Um, the feel in terms of, you know, openness to the toes is a lot like you would get in a minimalist shoe as well. So in the past, I've had, you know, you might have seen my blog on ice cleats. And ice cleats was always the way I went with, you know, for icy weather, I thought, well, I'll just, you know, I have decent boots. I'd even bought a pair of boots that were, you know, tested by Toronto Rehab and as one of the better boots. So they were pretty good, but I was still never 100% as confident as I feel with these ice bugs on my feet. Um, so I would generally, you know, if I had an icy day, I would get some cleats and, you know, we tested a variety of cleats but the cleats, there's two things that um, bothered me the most of them is A, I have rain out. And so for me to put cleats on and off, my hands have a really tough time um, with the cold. So that was one thing. The other thing is, so sometimes they would come off and then I'd have to put them back on in the cold weather and it was intolerable. But also they never felt part of my boot. They always felt like an extra layer, which threw my balance off a little bit. Um, and then when I wanted to transition, you know, into a grocery store, then that was like slip sliding away. Some of them were actually quite dangerous, uh, either, through, either I noticed with myself or with my clients. So that transition, whereas what the ice bugs do is they have not just studded soles, but they have rubber studs as well. So you never feel like you're just on the carbide steel studs and so you always have that extra um, support that the rubber provides and so if you've been following me for some time you know that i'm a um, big advocate of nordic poles and so you know especially with winter weather we take off the rubber booties and we take off these rubber booties to expose carbide steel tips which are the same type of steel tips that are at the bottom of the ice bug boots so when you're walking with the poles, you always have one other point of contact with whichever pole is hitting the ground, the same side, 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 opposite side that you're walking on. But now you have 20 points of contact. You have 19 of the boot studs and an extra one with the pole tip because you're only ever getting one pole tip at a time, which is why one more. Now with your poles, just a word here, some of you um, might have not gotten like adventure poles or poles with um, the snow cages. So make sure if you're taking this, uh, your boots on trails and you know, there's, you know, a couple inches of snow around you that you are going to want to have snow cages on your um, pole tips. Some of my clients ask me, can I drive with it? You know, they meet friends to go hiking. So I would definitely advise you to just check your state or provincial regulations to see if there's any um, regulations against driving with studded boots. I did drive to my grocery store so that I could test them out. Um, what I noticed is you're not going to slide your foot from gas to brake um, as nicely. So you're just going to have to be a little bit more conscious of lifting the foot or dorsiflexing to transfer your foot safely. And when I got out in the parking lot, there was no snow or ice. Um, I'm not very shy, so making noise, you know, with the steel studs, you know, better safe than sorry. So um, I found it was fine. The grocery store I walked in had tile floor. Again, I don't know, between the masks and everything that's going on these days, um, you know, it wasn't a big deal. It was a bit noisy, so I wanted to walk a little slower, more because of the noise 
than in terms of the slipping effect, but I felt quite safe and secure. I didn't even have a cart. I was carrying uh, a basket that day. So I feel quite comfortable, you know, saying that you can transition with the boots to different surfaces. Not that I would go shopping all day with them on or anything. Because um, the brand we bought was the Stride, I can't really comment on the other boots, but um, you know, if you're looking for the most grippy of the soles, you're wanting to look for the bug grip sole, but they do have a lot of description on all the other soles. And so they kind of describe the best environment and the best kind of condition that the boot will be for the type of person that might be looking you know, for that particular um, condition for themselves. So be sure to look through and select a pair that is right for you. So I hope that this vlog keeps you safe, keeps you enjoying winter, being, you know, confident taking that step, knowing that you're protecting yourself and staying healthy and active. So I'm Margaret at Miller Guide. Thanks for joining me today and I wish you a very lovely and active winter.